Hey, uh, so we're circling back on TSM. That's ticker symbol TSM, uh, which makes sense here. Uh, last time we looked at them was on March 17th. So about a little over a month ago at this point. Uh, when we checked on them at that point, uh, it was currently trading at 89. So it's dipped a little bit. We currently have the one month chart in the middle of the screen here. Uh, so we can actually see that dip happening. Uh, and it looks like it's just been a steady trend down over the past um, month. At a buy point marked at 87, so we actually went below that uh, just recently, and a resistance point at 104. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just go through the news, especially over that full month. Um, fair amount of stuff has happened, uh, one of which is their first quarter 2023 results came out. So that'll be more towards the end, but we'll sprinkle it in throughout the news. And then we will wrap up with the technical analysis. So if I go over something uh, and you have a question about it, uh, let me know in the comments, or if you just um, maybe wanna add something that I might've missed, uh, also feel free to add that in the comments. But uh, starting off with our first news article. Uh, so this one uh, proposed US guard wear guard rails on uh, chip investments in China. So uh, some of the world's leaders, you know, TSM included and Samsung, so some of the chip makers, um, they're gonna have some restrictions here uh, based on these US guidelines covering companies that receive federal funding for the, uh, what the US is calling the CHIPS Act. Uh, the proposed guidelines or guard rails uh, will bar any companies receiving a portion of that $52 billion, and it's specifically targeting um, companies, we see China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. Uh, so they're trying, if you're receiving the money from uh, this US CHIPS Act, they, uh, they are limiting your, I guess, sales and resources in these countries. And uh, we'll kind of go into that a little bit further um, it's also barring, uh, where is it? Right here. So it also is barring them from significant transactions involving material expansions of facilities for advanced chips in those countries for 10 years from receipt of funding. Uh, so this is really putting a lockdown on those countries. And I can really understand why China's making a stink of all this, uh, cause they're trying to grow like we are, but America's, uh, kind of holding them up here. So that's, uh, interesting, interesting tactic. Um, it also goes on to say, so the U.S. has gotten allies with them, specifically South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan. Taiwan being one of the bigger ones, uh, is helping them expand these trade sanctions uh, towards countries like China. Uh, South Korea is obviously a big one too, with Samsung and their chips. Taiwan, probably the biggest. And it's not included on this, but Netherlands, who's part of ASML, another huge player in this, they're gonna be joining this pack too. So uh, China is kind of screwed on this. Uh, we'll see how it plays out over time. Um, but yeah, I guess China is gonna to try to focus on the, the bigger chips because clearly they're gonna get resistance trying to get the new chips. So they're gonna to try to make do with these bigger chips and. I imagine they're gonna to try to create their own over time. But again, we'll see how this all shapes out over time. Um, it's expected uh, that TSM will slow down its investment in the country and focus on building production capacity in the US, Japan, and possibly Europe. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but they wanna keep Taiwan as its production hub. So Taiwan's gonna be like the main facility for uh, producing chips like the the new three nanometer and I would imagine still the five and seven but then these other offshoots in like Japan and US uh, those might be I don't know like the seven nanometers and up uh, so that should kind of keep things in Taiwan rolling here uh, in 2021 TSM invested about $3 billion to expand production capacity of its 28 nanometer chip. So again, in Nanjing, which is in China. So again, uh, China is gonna have these 
larger chips, I mean, by all means, they're still going to be small, but larger chips because they're not getting the three nanometers. But it looks like what's nice about this, it, I, I'm sure TSM didn't intend to do this. It just kind of naturally happened. But it sounds like they've already increased capacity within at least one of their China locations. So the fact that the U.S. is restricting companies from expanding further, fortunately for TSM, it seems like they've already done some expansion. So that probably won't really impact them too much. Um, and here it goes. It just says they've taken those proactive steps in adjusting production capacity to, to avoid these uh, restrictions slash bans. <clears throat> uh, they're currently building an $8.6 billion fab in Japan, and Sony's going to help. I, I believe we're going to touch on that a little bit later. And then we're, they're also building a $12 billion facility in Phoenix, Arizona in the U.S., and that's going to be part of their $40 billion investment in OPEX as part of their $40 billion to uh, produce more advanced semiconductors in the U.S. So uh, we'll see how this all kind of plays out, but you can see they're, they're making expansions. Uh, we're not sure if they're going to actually expand in Europe. Uh, that No country has really come up, but there are clear set pan, plans to uh, start production in Japan and United States. Probably it's going to take a while for like the facilities to get built up and whatever, but uh, the point is they are going to be coming to those countries very soon. Uh, here, what do we have? Taiwan says U.S. officials have visited to discuss concerns. Uh, so the main thing here is one of the like rules to receiving this uh, United States Chips Act funds is that uh, the U.S. wants to take a cut of this uh, not necessarily up front, more so on the back end, where it says uh, the conditions include sharing excess profit with the U.S. government. Uh, so I haven't found details on what that actually means, but, you know, just uh, through common sense, I, I don't, there's going to be a point where I don't know what that point might be, but for example, if uh, TSM, say, makes a billion dollars in profit, uh, the U.S. government might say, okay, well, once you get to um, maybe $500 million in profit, we want 10% of the money after that, something like that, uh, so that they can ensure that they're going to get paid back for this, this money. They don't want to just have it put out into the system and never get paid back. This is their way of ensuring that companies are going to actually pay them back and not keep putting it off until all of a sudden it's just forgotten about. So it's interesting. Uh, something else that came up, uh, Warren Buffett actually sold his position, not 100%, but he sold 86% of his position and his position in this company was built up very quickly in something like maybe a four month period. I don't know if it mentions it, but I, I know I read it somewhere. Um, but uh, someone within his team built up a TSM position somewhere in like 2021, maybe 2022, and uh, they decided to reduce it by 86% in the fourth quarter. And the reason is um, concerns over the geopolitical tensions between China and Taiwan. Uh, that's kind of the big thing is, will China invade Taiwan? Uh, if they do, when is that going to happen? Warren Buffett feels like that is um, an uncontrollable aspect of the business, and so he just doesn't want to involve himself with that. Uh, here we have uh, TSM plans for a cow, cow sing chip. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, so Taiwan, uh, again, it wants to keep its global hub in Taiwan, um, it's also investing in another location in Taiwan, which is this Kaohsiung. Uh, originally, they were going to have that location, that facility, uh, have seven nanometer chips, which is part of the more advanced ones. 
they changed it to now they're just going to do probably more of the 28 nanometer chips. And I'm sure this will evolve over time. But uh, I, I guess there was concerns of are they still going to have this other location in Taiwan? The answer is yes. And um, I guess some of the fluctuations is it's now going to be a more mature chip as opposed to a more advanced one. Uh, but overall, still okay. Um, U.S. is buying chips, so just a little fact I came across was um, right here. The U.S. Uh, let me take it back. So Global Hub for Silicon Fabrication Advances saw its chip making machine exports to U.S. rise 42% in March, uh, which is reaching 71 million dollars. Uh, so honestly, that's not too much. I mean, for a company that makes billions, so this isn't all that much. I thought this was more uh, as I was reading it, but uh, but I guess the point that I just thought it was interesting that the U.S. is growing where China's decreasing, but this is clearly a small aspect of their business, $71 million. For a billion-dollar company, that is hardly anything. So uh, moving on, uh, Intel is using TSM, so this was interesting. I uh, brought this up in the Intel video, but TSM is to manufacture its next, uh, or Intel is reportedly using TSM to manufacture its next gen GPUs. Uh, TSM, and this is why I found them and uh, want to stick with them. I'm not sure if I will be able to with everything that goes on. But TSM, this company, commands over half of the world's chip foundry market. And uh, once there's a clear-cut leader that emerges in an industry, no matter what it is, it's very difficult to dislodge it. And uh, this, th that's why we picked them. I mean, we, we saw that they were number one in this industry. And so we started following them. Uh, again, these geopolitical concerns, that, that is a big concern. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, but going back to the whole Intel thing, um, TSM is going to be the manu is the manufacturer of Intel's current GPUs, and it looks like it's probably going to stay that way for a little bit. Um, if you were wondering, I guess Intel just finds it more cost effective. But overall, uh, while this is nice that TSM is going to get uh, business from Intel, which is soon to be a stronger competitor down the road. Uh, they're saying this isn't really a big deal. Uh, Intel GPUs haven't really sold that much. They are growing, but at a very slow rate where it's not it's not really going to be an impact. Uh, TSM's main customers are Apple, AMD, Qualcomm, and NVIDIA. So, um, yeah, it's nice to know, but again, it's not going to be a huge impact to them. Uh, so, kind of we're going to get to quarter one earnings soon, but just like a little bit of a heads up. Uh, so it did fall uh, 5%. This was prior to them coming out. They were expecting a 5% drop in net profit. That actually did come true. Uh, and they're saying that the reason for this is these economic woes in terms of uh, the cars and the advanced computing. I would say mainly it's the advanced computing that took the biggest hit. I'm sure the car is, is impacting them too, but it's more so the computers. Uh, they're expecting net profits, where's this, for January to March to be about $6.3 billion, which is down slightly. I think, I, I guess it's about 5%, maybe a little more. Um, what else do we have? Uh, looking ahead into the second quarter. It's typically, it's typically a slow season, so they're already kind of prepping us that the second quarter is probably going to be slow. Uh, but they're citing that this is mainly due to uh, this inventory adjustment from major clients, uh, which kind of stinks. I mean, one aspect to this is, uh, you know, customers previously were making these big purchase orders thinking that uh, the demand was just going to keep coming and coming. And at the point... It was true, but then all of a sudden it became too much, and so they started cutting inventory. And then because they had this buildup of excess inventory, um, you know, it 
clearly led to less purchases and ultimately even cutting future purchases, which that's what we're seeing here. Um, they do expect momentum to pick up as early as the third quarter, and they're basing this off the fact that uh, recently Apple, NVIDIA, AMD, they've kind of showed their projections. And so based on their projections, TSM is saying, yeah, they're based on what they're saying, we should, we're should, we obviously going to benefit from that. Uh, they also forecast demand will recover in the second half, so basically a reiteration. Um, for the first quarter, they reported about $16.7 billion, uh, which is just in the range of what they projected. Um, oh, and there, there's a little note here. So uh, Buffett at one time bought more than $4.1 billion between July and September of 2022, and then he traded out. So just a little background there. Uh, moving on to uh, quarter two, uh, it kind of just reiterates some of the stuff that we covered before. Uh, but for 2023, TSM expects growth in the global semiconductor market, excluding memory, to decline in the mid-single digit percentage range year over year, which again, we do expect that because we, had, we, sh we saw such high growth in 2022. So for it to pull back in 2023, uh, that just makes sense, especially with all the economic things happening in terms of just spending. Uh, you know, everyone kind of bought up the computers and whatever. So this is this was expected to be a down year, and that's just kind of what's happening. Uh, in terms of, I mean, we are going to touch on this once we get to their quarter one report, but. As a heads up, so there are high performance computing chips <clears throat> and smartphone chips. There's the top two segments. There's the, and that's kind of why we're seeing such an impact on them. The computer chips make up 44% and the smartphone chips make up 34%. <clears throat> it also goes on to share that China's accounted for 15% of first quarter revenue, which I think going forward, they're still going to be allowed to trade to China. It's just, there, there's going to be some restrictions, but again, it seems like TSM actually set themselves up to kind of still allow solid revenues to be trickling in from China, where they're still going to be able to meet the requirements of the U.S. Chips Act. So, very good. Uh, it also says versus 12% in the previous quarter, uh, North America's share fell to 63% from 69. Um, probably just a timing thing uh, it's not much I, I would imagine that's that'll bounce back um, the company expects revenue to continue to fall a little bit between about 15.2 and 16 billion again they're thinking this is going to be the lowest of the low and then it'll start picking up again uh, we shall see uh, something else here let's see TSM supply uh, TSM's supply for its three nanometer chips, it's still lagging demand. So again, this is the latest and greatest in terms of the chips. So they're starting to get in there, um, but the demand is actually exceeding that. Uh, something else, they, they still think that business will continue to benefit from this mega trend of 5G uh, along with artificial intelligence. Again, those are some of the buzzwords for me was the 5G and AI. So they, TSM still believes they're gonna see lots of growth for that. And um, we touched on this slightly earlier that uh, TSM's evaluating the possibility of building a fab plant in Europe, specifically for auto chips. Uh, we'll see if that actually happens. The fact that it hasn't happened yet, I'm kind of leaning towards no, that's not gonna happen, but things could change. Uh, in terms of the to the plant in Japan, this looks like it's going to be about an $8 billion uh, fabrication uh, facility. Uh, they're thinking that the Japanese government will cover about half of that, which, again, similar to Intel's story, they're going to see a lot of expansion. 
uh, with a lot of new facilities and the fact that they won't need to pay for it all, uh, that's going to be very good for them. Uh, save them money, of course. Uh, Japan had their own sort of CHIPS Act, which is about $6.8 billion, so considerably less. But again, I think they were just putting that out there mainly to target Taiwan. They are very close in terms of proximity, and they're saying that most, they, they, they feel that TSM's effort may represent a significant portion of that 6.8, which again, for an $8 billion facility, uh, if they're going to cover half, that is that is the majority there. And also of note, TSM is going to be teaming up with Sony on this plant. So they're going to be incorporated with, I would imagine, Sony systems in terms of TVs, uh, video game platforms, um, any type of technology Sony comes out with. So that is going to be a nice team to see how it evolves over time. Um, if we go to... This is the last article before we get into our whoops, our uh, quarterly reports. Uh, so TSM, a, in terms of the U.S. Chips Act, uh, right here, they're seeking $15 billion. So uh, just the quick line here, uh, they're seeking $15 billion uh, from the U.S. Chips Act. It seems like they're already anticipating seven to eight billion dollars in tax credits. And they're now hoping to get another $7 billion in grants, which uh, I'm not sure how big hopes to use government money to support. It's so a $40 billion project in Arizona. Uh, they're hoping to get 15. That's not half, but it's, it's pretty good. And chances are it might go up in terms of tax credits over time. But the point is, you know, they're saying they're spending all this money in this case, 40 billion, but really it's not 40 billion because uh, they're going to get these big rebates and refunds back. Uh, it's going to be nice for the company. Uh, so finally, getting to the quarter one uh, financial statements, it, it's more so their report on quarter one. Uh, it, it doesn't go in as in-depth as the financial statements, but it's going to give us some high key notes that I just wanted to touch on. Uh, so right here we have the net revenue, and this is in these, I forget what NT is, it's like New Taiwan billion dollars or something. Uh, anyway, it, it kind of gives us an idea. Um, obviously we can see the numbers have gone down. We have $16.7 billion in the current quarter. They expected it to be in that range. This barely made it into that range. If we look at last quarter, it's clearly gone down. Quarter over quarter, it's gone down 16%. Year over year, about 5%, as mentioned earlier. Uh, net revenue, what is this? Oh, I th oh, okay, I think this is actually United States money, so 16 billion. In their money, it was like 508 billion, but in US money, 16 billion. Uh, the thing that is, uh, it's not really troubling yet, but this gross margin, it's still above 50%. Last quarter was at 62. It's pulled back to 56. Uh, this is still in line when we look at last year. It's actually slightly higher than last year. Uh, I know this was somewhat anticipated because as the demand was growing and the supply was still low, they were able to increase their prices. So the fact that I would imagine their prices are pulling back some that's now impacting gross, the gross margin percentage, uh, but we're still seeing above 50%, which is a very nice figure. And then in terms of like rolling down to the actual net profit, they're still carrying about 40% to their net profit. So phenomenal numbers. Uh, I really like these, and that's why we, we kind of fell in love with this company. I, I hope we can stick with them. Uh, and then in terms of the different nodes we have here, you can see most of it is still within the five nanometer and seven nanometers. They're, they mentioned the three nanometer chips coming out. Uh, it's clearly not in this pie yet, in this pie chart. Um, not sure when that'll happen. Um, I guess it's still so new that it's just not, it's not making an impact just yet. 
I, I'm sure over the next quarter, probably by the end of the year, I would expect at least we'll see that piece start to grow over time. Um, but yeah, it's just not there yet. In terms of platforms, this we mentioned this also, how the computers, 44%, smartphones, 34 So those are the big areas. And of course, in terms of growth rate, you can see it's falling off a cliff here. Uh, but again, we're hoping and expecting to see that turn around uh, towards the second half of the year in uh, quarter three. Automotive is still actually growing, which also is expected. Uh, Internet of Things or others is probably AI. Uh, so we'll see how that evolves too. In terms of the balance sheet, uh, I like their current ratio. Uh, you can see their cash, uh, 1.5, trillion dollars in terms of their Taiwanese dollars compared to current liabilities at $800 billion in their new Taiwanese uh, dollars. Uh, so clearly they they have like double the cash of the current liability. So they're financially stable. Uh, and to Warren Buffett's point, I mean, that's why he was okay with this, but because the China issue uh, just the risk was not worth it because uh, you can't control that. We do see a slight tick up in their property. Uh, it's It doesn't seem like a lot, but again, it went up about 140 billion uh, new Taiwanese dollars, and that would be about $4 billion in the US. So the fact that they want to expand about, uh, I think between 30 and 32, 30 and 34 billion dollars during the year. Uh, they've made about 4 billion so far. Uh, so we're expecting that to see an uptick over time. Um, if we scroll down, here we go with the guidance again. They're expecting about 15.2 to 16 billion. Gross profit should s s actually pull back a little bit more, but still be above 50%, which is good. Operating margin still at about 40%. So again, very good there. Uh, in terms of the major events, we have the dividends that's still sticking around, and they're also uh, they approved these restricted stock awards. So I'm not sure how that impacts the actual common stock. Uh, hopefully not at all, but I'm sure it does to some degree. If if you're more familiar with that, please let me know in the comments. I, I'd be curious to find that out. Uh, but that covers the news. So now we can look at the technical analysis and right off the bat, it looks like it's, it's wanting to break out of this uptrend. And I have to imagine that is due to, uh, the results we're seeing, like, again, I just, I'm very surprised these stocks, TSM and in, in this case, I'm very surprised that all of them really started to grow at this point. Um, uh, again, I think it was because right around this time, back in like November, December, or, or maybe even January, uh, one of the analysts that follows this industry basically said he's expecting that uh, the semiconductor crash or um, inventory situation is going to resolve itself in quarter three. People started getting ahead of it. But now that we're still seeing their financials be just terrible, quarter over quarter and year over year. Uh, I, I think that's what's happening is people got really excited, pushed it up. And now that we're seeing uh, a continuation of just poor results in terms of growth, I think that's why it's starting to flatline here. Um, I, I'm still gonna keep the uptrend intact. If, if this continues to trade sideways for another two, uh, probably three weeks, then yeah, I'll remove the uptrend. But for now, I, I still think it's within strikeable distance that one or two weeks, it could pull right back or accelerate right back into that uh, uptrend range. Uh, so we will keep that there for a little bit longer, just really confirm has it really broken. Uh, but in terms of like a buy point for me, uh, like uh, again, we marked 87 and we'll zoom in so 87 i think i meant to do 88 unless i actually bumped the that blue line our fair value line up a little bit by accident uh, but 
the fact that it's currently at 85. Uh, the buy points, I guess it was 88. Um, we changed it to 88 just because. Um, yeah, I mean, I think if you're willing to, if we're willing to, uh, I guess, have the courage to support this company with the whole China fiasco, if that risk is worth the reward, then yeah, I think this is a decent time to buy. Uh, it's in a slight dip. Uh, there's potential that it could pull back into that accelerated uptrend. Um, it's at slightly below what we consider to be a fair value point, going back to when we initially started about a couple months ago. Uh, so a lot of indicators, at least on paper, seem to be okay. It's just, is it worth investing something in this company now when all of a sudden a couple years go by and um, disaster strikes? I, and um, it could lead to a lot of institutional investors uh, leaving. Uh, I think the fact that we're going to be kind of staying in the loop with this one um, I think if disaster were to strike, we won't we won't necessarily be on that initial wave, but we'll probably be on the second wave of if people really start funnel, funneling out of this. Uh, I have to imagine we'd be on the first to second line of we'll be able to catch this before it like falls through the floor. But again, it it may not be worth the risk. Um, but I, I, again, I feel like that's more of a, um, a few years out, but we'll continue to monitor, uh, this situation. Um, I, I guess at this point I'm okay with, you know, I, I actually think to play it safe, I probably won't add much, like, like maybe one share just because it's it's at a decent spot um, and I do I just really like this company uh, again they're they're a front runner I feel like they have a lot of potential out there um, I guess my call would be again just play it safe uh, probably buy just one maybe two shares build it out a little bit more but yeah if we start to see escalation between the two countries yeah, we'll probably do what Warren Buffett did and pull out. Um, I, I guess I'm willing to take a little more risk than he is at this point, um, you know, because it's really, I'm just responsible for myself. He's responsible for a lot of other people, um, especially with like Berkshire Hathaway. So uh, I will take on a little more risk and I, I will probably add to this position. Uh, so just a quick recap for us. Uh, TSM up at the top here. Currently it's at 85 at a buy point of 88 so because it's below that line we marked it green as a potential buy and resistance is expected at 104 so definitely some room to grow there probably about 20 ish percent and then the dates uh, notes we can put um china versus taiwan uh concern and uh we'll just keep following that as best we can uh, but yeah, that pretty much wraps this up. It, if you have any comments, questions, by all means, let me know in, low, in the comments section below. Uh, otherwise, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.